What's up, y'all? Entropy here. Welcome back to Old Dominion Dynasty. We are starting our second season here at the helm of Old Dominion, and Coach Ropey's hoping to have another strong season after his surprisingly successful season his first year. We're uh, we're riding high right now. We're feeling good, and uh, hopefully we can keep the momentum going into this next season. We've got, of course, Virginia Tech, our arch rival, on the docket this week, but I do want to take a quick look at recruiting for you guys because... There's just a couple things. I distributed points to account for our positions of need. So center's a big one for us. And then I go in after two outside linebackers here and Jason Johnson and John Stewart, middle linebacker. Um, I'm going after the number one middle linebacker kind of just for kicks to see what happens. We have a considerable amount of bonus points working in our favor. Um, but of course, we're going up against some really good schools to try and get them. So I don't know what our odds actually are, but... He's here, and he's at least slightly considering us, so I'm at least going to throw some at him to begin. But Anthony Peoples, I think, is the most, much more likely uh, player for us to land of the two. But middle linebacker is one that we're going after as well. I've got a free safety here that I'm putting points into, and then I think we're losing both strong safeties as well, so I'm going after both of these guys. None of them are particularly high overall, but I'm just trying to, early in the cycle, get some guys secured at the positions of need so that we can look towards either finding upgrades over them later in the cycle or being able to just go after other positions in general. Um, I got points going into a few other players as well. I wanted to highlight a couple tight ends I added to the board. Um, you didn't see these guys at the end of the last episode, but Edward Brandt and Brent Rogers, both are massive dudes. Brent Rogers is 6'7", 262. Brandt is 6'8", 245. And... Um, they would be nice to add to the room. Uh, we, our tight end room is pretty set right now, but I know it's getting kind of old. We've got at least two juniors and a senior, I think, so we're uh, going to have to replenish that room at some point. And these guys would be nice to bring in developmentally. I'm not really sure which one I want to prioritize. Obviously, I'll get some points back from offering scholarships next week, but we'll see. But I add those two to the board so you guys don't know who they are. And then I also added a, or I didn't add rather, but I put points into the pair of athletes that we saw that we added to the board. Justin Alexander was interested in us right from the get-go, so we're putting points into him. Would love to add him. He's a very intriguing athlete. Looks like he'd slide in on the offensive side of the ball, most likely a receiver with that 6'4", 216 frame, and then of course the 72 catching, 80 route running, stuff like that. His defensive prowess just is not very good and 6'4 is tall for a running back so we probably won't have him there Kerry Brown's the other one he's a guy that could be looks like he could slide in almost anywhere we could put him at quarterback we could put him in the defensive backfield we could put him at receiver he looks like he could even play running back his carrying's a little low and his ball carrier vision's a little low as well so maybe not running back but he's also 6'4 I'm now seeing I didn't realize that so most likely definitely not at running back but another interesting player so those are the guys that we're going after to start here. And of course, I'll update you guys as things happen, but it may be slow for the first couple of weeks. I also changed a few numbers uh, for our two highest recruits because they'll be playing right away. Josh Cruz will be rocking number 22 and John Marshall, our highest rated recruit from this past cycle. And maybe the one I was most excited about landing will be rocking number seven. I like to do like the thing where guys kind of earn the single digit jersey numbers. Um, right now, there's a lot of them that are being occupied by uh, real life players, so not a lot are available. But I intend on implementing that system uh, as this uh, dynasty progresses. But Marshall being our highest rated recruit, I wanted to get him rocking the single digit number right off the bat. This is the form we'll be rocking this week. Blue pants, blue helmet, and white top. Here we are, the rivalry is renewed between Virginia Tech and Old Dominion. They got the better of us last year. I believe they beat us rather handily, but we got the momentum on our side from last season, and we've got a couple new players, as well as a new quarterback from when we last saw him, so they may be in for a bit of a surprise, hopefully.
And here we are at Lane Stadium, where the Hokies are set to take on their rival, the Monarchs. This will be a fun one. Hopefully we can do a... It'll be at least closer than last year, where, as I said, I believe they beat us rather handily. I remember their quarterback, dang it, had a uh, crazy rushing touchdown, so <laughs> things didn't go our way. New quarterback for them is, and new running back from last year, but they are off to a roaring start. Oh, no. He's on the sideline. I'm struggling to speak because I'm trying to get over there. But Malachi Thomas on the first play from scrimmage rips off a 46-yard run. Not the start we're looking for. Run the option. Pitch to the outside. Artarian Johnson kind of gets him down, but I believe that's Trey Hawkins the third finishing him off. Quarterback run up the middle, slides, first down. Another handoff. Ooh, and Artarian Johnson lights him up. Big hit. Draws back to pass for the first time. Can't find anyone. He wants to run, and Ryan Henry knocks him down. Knox Kadem gets sacked, and it's third and seven. And he chooses to throw it away. I think they wanted a screen pass, but we covered it well. And Virginia Tech stalls in the red zone, and they'll be settling for a field goal. And it's through. Virginia Tech gets a 3-0 lead here early. Jordan Bly, fresh off the injured list, back in the return game, and he's got a room down the sideline, gets it out to the 35. Boy, we missed him. Like Watson, first carry of the new season, and it's a good one. Ten yards. Give it to him again. He's still going first down, Monarchs. Watson again, big hole to run through. Puts a move, and he's got another first down. Strong start to the season for Blake. Watson manages four, and we got third and six here on the first drive. Virginia Tech sends heat. Blake Watson, he came back too far for it. I hate when they do that. He came running back. I needed him to just stay there and catch it and then turn and go, and he had all kinds of room. But instead, he comes rushing back to make the catch, and I don't know if we're even in field goal range. They're saying we're not. So we are <laughs> just going to go for this because we're in their end, and I'm not about to punt it. Fourth and nine. We're going for it. And we got the freshman, John Marshall, in the flat. Oh, and he absorbs a big hit. But what a huge play for the freshman on his first target of his career. Oh, dang it. Gosh, hit the ground already. Last thing he's that being picked off. I wanted Marshall over the middle, but they got to me. Coons over the middle. He's got it. First down, Monarchs, and we're down inside the five. Watson up the middle, spinning, fighting, touchdown, Monarchs! And we've got the lead here early. About to go up four with the extra point. Ryan Henry makes a good play there, and he's stymied for a mere two yards. Uh-oh, he's got a lot of running room. I airballed the tackle, but our Terry and Johnson is there to stop him. But a big gain on the ground for Virginia Tech again. I completely overran that route. I knew what he was doing, and I just ran way too far to the left. Oh, no. He's running free. Can Artarian Johnson get him? He does somehow make some miraculous diving tackle to save a touchdown, but Virginia Tech is right on the goal line now. He keeps and Bibby is there. He fumbled the ball, but Tavion Robinson, the wide receiver, is there to recover. Oh, that would have been huge. They are reviewing if it was a fumble. That definitely does not look like a fumble, but this actually, I think, would make them lose yards because the ball went forward when it came out of his hand. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. This might actually hurt him if they overturn it. Okay, they said he was down, but I think that makes them lose another yard. Oh, and we can't stop him. Malachi Thomas gets in. 
for another, or not another, that's their first touchdown of the day, rather. But Virginia Tech has regained the lead. Jordan Bly will return this. Oh, what a move to the outside. He's got some running room, and he's forced out of bounds just past the 35-yard line. That man is dangerous with the ball in his hand. John Marshall, the freshman on the jet sweep, and not a lot of room as he is lit up again. That is two hard hits he's absorbed so far. Pressure is immense. We're going to try and... Oh, gosh, dang it. That nearly went right to the defender. I really don't know what I was trying to do there, but it may have actually been a better thing that the ball got knocked down, but regardless, it is now third and long. Oh, and Raphael McCoy dropped it. I don't know if the defender made a play on the ball there or not, but gosh dang it. Now we got to punt it back. Our defense has been struggling to stop them so far, but this is we're asking a lot of them here. But they answer the call, as I believe that is Feliciano. Yes, Estefano Feliciano in the backfield, bringing down the quarterback to make it second and long. Big play on first down. And another big play as Valakai Thomas is brought down at the line of scrimmage. That, that was Feliciano again. That's two plays in a row. All kinds of time for the quarterback. He puts it deep and it's knocked down. I believe that's Damian Charity with the PBU. And we're going to get the ball back. Big stand by the defense. We're going to try something a little crazy here. This is going to be a play action pass to Marshall. And he fields it, makes a move. Gets some running, and he is near the first down line. Wolf. If, oh, gosh dang it. He is really slow, and he is sacked for a huge loss. I can't be doing that. Oh, gosh dang it. The pass rush got to me. No one was open, and that was one of the worst sequence of plays maybe ever. And it is fourth and 26. Dang it, we needed points. Screen pass. I get picked up in the block, and they get six yards on first down. And he is sacked. Amari Morrison brings him down for a loss of eight. That's huge, as we are just trying to prevent them from scoring here in the last two minutes. Oh, he's wide open, spins, and he goes out of bounds. Tavion Robinson was running free on third and long. That would have been nice to get a stop there, and now all of a sudden they're threatening to score again. Our quarterback wants to run it. Ryan Henry brings him down. He hangs onto the ball as well, but the clock is moving. They are not calling their timeouts. Oh, I hit the wrong button and I dove instead of going for the ball. Gosh, dang it. I got mixed up with Madden because in Madden the SWAT button is different. Crap. Quarterback keeps. He runs into his own lineman, which we benefit from. And he's brought down for only a gain of one. They're now running no huddle. Trying to get as many plays off as possible. I don't know if anyone, everyone was even set before they did that. And that guy is running wide open. Touchdown, Hokies. They are now going to be up two scores. They execute the two-minute drill. And we... Uh, gosh dang it. I really wish I hadn't punted the ball back to him. I really wish we could have gotten points. We do get the ball to start the second half. But being down two scores is never a good feeling. Jordan Bly downfield. He breaks a tackle and he's running free. Is he going to make it or will the Hokies track him down? 10, 5, and he's down. We are going to call timeout, but a huge play from Jordan Bly. Welcome back, buddy. Just throwing that one away, and now we're down to 11 seconds. We're going to try a run play just because we have the timeouts if it doesn't work. And it doesn't work. We call our second timeout, third and goal. I really don't want to settle for a field goal. 
Oh, gosh, no one's open. We're going to run for it with Wolf, and he makes it! Hayden Wolf scores with two seconds left on the clock. Unbelievable. He is, the, he is quite far from a dual threat, but my word, putting the team on his back on that play, and we cut the lead back down to one score before the half. Let's go! That is exciting. We really needed that. And Paris lines up. I... Did not do that very well, but it still went through quite well, so that's okay. <laughs> and that will do it for the first half. Malachi Thomas already at 125 yards on the ground. And Old Dominion only down three thanks to the huge play from Jordan Bly in the last 30 seconds. We are very much in this game, and we are getting the ball to start, so that's exciting. Fly fields it at the goal line, puts a move, gets the outside, and he gets out to about the 40. He's had three very strong returns in this game. I really wanted to get that pitch over to Livingston, but I knew if I tried to pitch it in all that traffic, I would have definitely fumbled. Over the middle, Javon Harvey's got it. Tries to put a move on like three guys at the same time, but we're down to just outside the 10. We're gonna try and give the freshman John Livingston the carry here and see if he can make something happen. Gets up the middle, the burst, and he's in! John Livingston, his first career carry is a 12 yard touchdown to take the lead over Virginia Tech. You could see the speed on that play. Compared to, I mean, no no offense to Blake Watson, it has been very good to us uh, over the past year and half game, I guess, that we played with him. But, wow, the speed is a huge difference. Oh, Thomas has a lot of running room again. Robert Kennedy the third spins him down short of the line to gain. Oh, that would look like a... RPO play almost, but it is falls incomplete. The receiver just flat out dropped it. Play action in the flat. I don't know why Kennedy didn't tackle him as soon as it got to him, but at least it wasn't a big gain, but they did get the first down. Thomas wide open in the flat. Charity trips him up from behind, but 21 yards. This Malachi Thomas guy is giving us a ton of problems. And if you remember, I believe their running back Blackshear last year gave us a ton of problems as well. So Virginia Tech running backs are absolute monsters. Oh, I thought I had the pick. I was sitting right there and the guy was running right to Henry, but oh, it just got completed. Dang it, that's so disappointing. Oh, Cruz came off his man but couldn't make the play, and Gallows got the first down. That's a name I think I recognize from last year. Oh my gosh, how are we leaving their best player wide open so often? Tavion Robinson with a touchdown on a play where, once again, nobody was near him. I mean, there wasn't a man within 15 yards of that guy. Jeez, oh Pete. And the Hokies take the lead right back. This is uh, this has been quite the back and forth affair. You bet Jordan Bly is going to try his hand at it returning this one. Gets the outside. Again, has lots of running room. Gets to about the 45. He's getting like incrementally closer to taking one to the house. He's so close. Watson manages three, but Virginia Tech was ready for him. We got third and eight. Huge third down play. We really need to keep this drive going. And I nearly threw a pick because I thought Marshall was going to get more separation, but he didn't. And it is now th not third, fourth and eight. And I think we're going to have to punt it. Another big possession for the defense here. We got to keep them from going up two scores because we're going to start running out of time. And the ball's on the ground. Ryan Henry knocks it loose, and Amari Marson scoops it up. And the big fellow rumbles home for a touchdown. What a turn of events. I was just saying how important of a drive this was. 
and the defense responds in the biggest way possible by scoring a touchdown themselves. Unbelievable play. Wow. What a hit by Henry and what a scoop and score by Morrison. Oh my gosh, that was, that was awesome. You can sense the air has deflated the arena a little. You can, you can sense that the arena has become a bit deflated after that play. Oh, but Virginia Tech's got a big play coming right back at us. That is so disappointing. I would have loved if we could have like gotten a huge play on first down there to keep the momentum going, but they are right back in business. Oh, Gallo, what a that was quite a cut by a tight end, and he's got a first down. And another first down for Virginia Tech. They are rolling. What in the... <laughs> what? What was that animation? It looked like he, the quarterback just went on a slip and slide. That was insane. It literally looked like he slipped out of a banana peel or something. That was... <laughs> Either way, loss of three. We'll take it. And the third quarter has now drawn to a close as well. So we are... Up four in the start of the fourth quarter. If we can keep from scoring here, I mean, all we got to do is string a drive together and we've got the win, but we got to stop them first because their offense is cooking. All right, good stop there. Thomas has take, got, had a lot of big gains today. We held him to three and it's third and long. A field goal does not do them a lot of good here. So they're likely gonna go for it on fourth if they don't get it here and they do not get it they only get four yards on third down i anticipate they will yes they will be going for this all right defense one more stop baby and ryan henry intercepts it he undercuts the route beautifully and virginia tech has turned the ball over again what a play Unbelievable. <laughs> Ryan Henry read that like a book. I wasn't even usering him there. That was just him making the play. And we are in business. Now we just got to run the clock down. Oh, they blew that one up and we got third and seven. Wolf over the middle. He's got Jennings. Jennings is running free. All the way home! Touchdown, Monarchs! Hayden Wolf with a gutsy pass with pressure in his face. And Ali Jennings takes it the distance. Woo! Let's go! Oh, I read that too. Oh my gosh, and a huge hit by Lamarian James. Woo! He'll be feeling that one. Oh, he's got Robinson over the middle. The man who has always been wide open to make the big play when they need it. And they are running no huddle. And Kadem just straight up missed him. He was open, just not a good pass. Oh my gosh, he just flat out dropped it. The receivers are not doing their quarterback any favors right now as they're looking at third and long. Another screen pass. We cannot bring him down. <laughs> and he still wasn't really brought down. He just ran out of bounds. But it's fourth and four. They did not convert. And I, yep, they're going for it. Virginia Tech holding on to their last hope of pulling this comeback off. Wants the receiver, but Lamari and James is there for the pick. Stays in bounds, but he is brought down immediately. And that is essentially going to do it. We just got to run the clock out. Nice play by Lamarian. Oh my gosh, what a move by Watson. And he's got 19 yards. Another good run by Watson. We're calling the option play, baby. Stay home on Watson. I got the pitch out to Livingston. Tries a juke, doesn't work, but we do get the first down. That is the most important part about that play for sure.
All right, we got it to fourth down, and we're running. We don't have the time, so we're just going to try and burn as much time as we can on this play as we've got McCoy over the middle. Puts a move on. He, he, he does end up fighting in for a touchdown. Just a little smack in the face to our rival, I guess. That was not 100% intentional, but I ain't going to complain about scoring. And they are going to have us go for the extra point anyway. Screw it, we're going for two. Yeah, that was a horrid pass, but that is going to do it as we, for some reason, get a scoring update after our game is concluded. But West Virginia up early on Alabama. Pretty exciting, I guess. That is going to do it from Lane Stadium. I already forgot the name of their stadium. I think that's what it's called. But a huge win for the Monarchs, picking up not only their first win of the season in their first game of the season, but in a rivalry game. We got the Hokies back after they took us down last year. The team's got to be excited, I would imagine. And, wow, what a performance. So many big plays. That one to Ali Jennings, maybe the biggest. That was the one that really put it on ice because it put us up two scores late in that game in the fourth quarter. So, huge, huge game. Nothing but respect to the, the Hokies, particularly their running back. I mean, we didn't have much of an answer for him. But Hayden Wolf. Had a rock-solid game. The biggest thing was no turnovers. That was the biggest thing, because they turned the ball over three times, and I think that was the difference in the game, really. Hayden Wolf, nice game. Not a great completion percentage, only going 8 for 14, but for 237, two touchdowns and no picks. Really hard to complain. Did take two sacks, but that was more me being dumb and trying to run around and buy time with a guy who isn't fast. Blake Watson was rock solid on the ground, 18 for 86 and a touchdown. The lack of speed is still very evident, but he did look like he had a lot more shake this year. I feel like he made a lot more guys miss than he did last year. He had some pretty wild runs. And how about John Livingston, the true freshman? He is a low overall player, but he has that 92 speed, and it was extremely evident on that touchdown run that he had. I think we may have to try and figure out a way to get him the ball more often. Maybe even something like changing our playbook up a little bit. I know we've just been kind of using Old Dominions as just because we're coaching Old Dominion, but I may have to explore possibly changing that around. A wild receiving uh, stat sheet here with John Marshall being the only guy with more than one reception. Jordan Bly, of course, the big 79 yarder down the sideline as the first half was closing out, which we converted into a touchdown. That was awesome to see. So glad to have him back. He is going to make some plays for us this year. Ali Jennings, of course, the big 64-yard touchdown to put the game on ice. Outstanding play from him. Javon Harvey, who's buried all the way down at fifth on the depth chart now, uh, came in and made a play. Love to see that. Raphael McCoy was quiet aside from the last play of the game in which he took to the house when we were just trying to burn time. He did also have that drop, but again, I don't know if that was him dropping it or if that was the defender making a play on it. We never really got a good look at it. And John Marshall, a little quiet, only 24 yards on his two catches, but it was nice to see that he looked like a dependable option. And Zach Koontz, of course, won for 17 as well. Ryan Henry, the star of the defense, leading in tackles, but Artarian Johnson, a strong safety, not far behind him, thrust it into a starting role with JoJo Heaton graduating. And uh, he made the most of it, I would say. We had three TFLs with Henry. Feliciano, the new starter out at linebacker, had one. Tyree Bibby had one, and Amari Morrison had one. Amari uh, Morrison's was for a sack, and Ryan Henry had a sack as well. That's nice to see, because we do not, we did not generate a lot of sacks last year. And um, that's something I would like to see us take a step forward in this season. And uh, getting two in week one is a good start. And, of course, we had the two picks, Samari and James, the one on fourth down, and Ryan Henry over the middle. And, of course, Ryan Henry also forced the fumble, which Amari Morrison recovered and returned for a touchdown in maybe the biggest momentum swing of the game. Love to see the defense make plays, especially when they're really being counted on. And we have a coaching update. N7 Rofi is now level 10. Let's go uh, take care of that. I'm kind of going between Locksmith or the Closer. Obviously, Locks. Obviously, I guess neither of them is something we're going to need. Like, 
right away. And if I wanted to do royal treatment as well. We've already got two into that. I want to upgrade one of these others. But the closer would be kind of preparing so that we have points when we might need them in the second half of the year. Or there's locksmith, which if we get locked out of a battle that we really, really want to stay in, it would probably be nice to have that. But I also, I mean, I'll go rec entire recruiting cycles without ever using it. So it's something where it's like, do I really think it'd be worth it? Whereas at least with the closer, we know we'd be getting those points. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to put it in locksmith. I think just having it will be a good thing. I think it'll benefit us just to have the locksmith ready in case we need it. And as you can see, we also have now opened up this next uh, this next row. Probably won't get into these yet until maybe we get closer to the end of the season because Letter of Intent is a big one. Because as you saw in the offseason episode that we just had, Sometimes there's a lot of players and you just don't have enough points to really put in all of them So upgrading that is going to be huge and then kitchen sink will also be Pretty important especially as we try to go after some of the bigger recruits when we're fighting against bigger schools to try and get them but Yeah, for now, we're just gonna put in locksmith. We'll be all right next up We go on the road to play number 12 NC State Hopefully they won their first week because I'd like them to still be ranked uh, when we play them, we'll see. Ryan Henry took home NCAA Defensive Player of the Week honors for his stellar performance. Seven tackles, three TFLs, a sack, a forced fumble, and a pick. And look at who won Offensive Player of the Week. Devin Leary, who we will be going against this week. It looks like they did win against Central Michigan. 58-41, they put up a ton of points, so... Wow, what are the odds of that? That is going to do it for us this week. Old Dominion, huge getting the first win of the year. And we've got a tough, tough test coming up. Going on the road to play number 11, North Carolina State. Hopefully we can keep it going. Um, this will definitely be a test. It'll be a game I won't be surprised if we lose, but it would still be disappointing. Especially because I feel like the team is playing so well right now. But... We'll have to wait and see how that goes. Thank y'all for watching, and I'll see y'all in the next episode. Later, y'all.